Come along, children. Now we're going to have a little music. What's up, y'all? Welcome to uh, this uh, special edition of First Cut, where we're talking about our most anticipated movies of 2020. 2020. Yeah, we are. Uh, we're here. I'm excited. This is actually actually had a harder time than expected putting together this list. Definitely. Um, mainly because like there are so many movies coming out that I'm looking forward yeah. to. Um, I'm almost like this might be one of the top gears of the film, like in general. That I'm, the, just what I'm looking at, like, it's, it's crazy. It is it is cool to see it and then to be able to reflect back on something like this at the end of the year. Um, mm. Obviously, this is an entire year from now that we'll be reflecting back, so it's crazy to think about. Right. Um, but, yeah, it, it is shaping up to look really, really nice as long as all of this works out the way that we, you know. Yeah, for sure. Hope. <laughs> we got hope. We always got to keep up hope. So, uh, yeah, why don't, why don't we start with you, uh, Sabrina? What's, what's okay. um, like you could give it, we could just go back and forth. Yeah. So, yeah. um, one of my most anticipated, cause this is no like specific order. Yeah. Um, this is just kind of like a grouping of all of mine. Yeah. Um, so promising young woman. Okay, with Carrie okay. Mulligan, I think I think we saw the trailer in theaters one time. Yeah. Um, so has Carrie Mulligan, Bo Burnham, various other actors. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a really good trailer. The um, synopsis online doesn't give too much away, but it kind of seems like somebody wronged her, and now she's getting revenge on men. Something that she yeah. is clearly very smart. Um, I think it says that she went to like law school. No, uh, doctor. Mm-hmm. She was studying to be a doctor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that one looks really exciting. You know, I mean. Um, in this time that we're in, of course, like I'm always excited to see really strong female characters, especially ones that are really smart. Right. And when it does it in a non like, um, like it's not exploiting this. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I'm hoping for for something like this. So yeah, Bo Burnham as well. Come yeah, on, I, I'm yeah. I always great. love to see him act yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he was in the Big Sick. Oh yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, in was the Big in Sick. That, yeah. So I I love seeing him doing little things like that. So yeah. it looks like he has a bigger role in this one. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, no, that's super exciting. No, I, I I'm looking forward to that, and it looks like a really cool like revenge thriller esque yeah. type thing. Yeah. Um, speaking of female empowerment, I'm keeping that going. Uh, I gotta go with Birds of Prey on this one. Yes. Uh, Birds of Prey, and listen, like. I get it. Like, I know. I saw <laughs> Suicide Squad, you know? Like, yeah. I know what a good trailer can do. And this could be very much a case of, like, a really great trailer yeah. for a really bad movie, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that being said, I would be remiss to say every time I, do- I watch this trailer, a tear doesn't come into my eye. I so love this trailer. Yeah. It's like... It's like if you made a movie for RB3, this is, this is what, this is what it would it. look like. Because this is it looks like it's a encompassing like the 70s gritty kind of pulpy like crime drama-esque flavor yeah. with like the weird zoom ins and like the bold colors yeah. um, but then it's playing into like this almost whimsical element too like where you know we see obviously like Harley Quinn singing with like these dudes like shooting around her and like all of these there's so much weird imagery just in that trailer along I'm like wow I, I am stoked to see this movie yeah oh my gosh I am so excited for that one that one's also on my list mm-hmm. um, I want to see that badass team of DC ladies I yes. want to see them go up against Ewan McGregor I yeah, mean they're, yeah. like that's a recipe for success in my book as long as it's executed well Yes. obviously Suicide Squad major disappointment yeah. um, kind of all around the board in every single way um, and they did have that Comic Con footage that came out a year beforehand yeah. that looked spectacular but I yeah. think this one's going to be a different story for i'm sure. hoping for that for sure for yeah sure. yeah i'm hoping so too um yeah so birds of prey definitely excited and also can't be remiss to shout out captain yan who's who's directing that movie as well yeah um okay so yeah so my next one is the invisible man oh okay yeah it's elizabeth a, moss. yeah elizabeth moss yeah. and also the actor from haunting of hill house who mm. was a standout in that season um plays like the husband boyfriend mm. Um, but yeah, it's a modern adaptation by Lee Wanell, starring Elizabeth Moss. Um, I think it was supposed, like, it was intended to be part of that whole. Um, oh, the universe. With, yeah, with yeah, the mummy. Yeah, yeah, all of that. But I think it's uh, separating itself, which I think is a good idea because you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it looks so good. Like, it looks like this like slow burn. Him being like an abusive um, husband, kind of like getting revenge, like faking his own death, and then like. Right like hunting after her and her looking absolutely insane. Right, right, um, right, right. I feel like it's going to be a nice, like, f- just from the trailer, it looks like really, like, I don't know, like high tension, high intensity um, horror. Right. Which I always love. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I, I think I, I got a chance to talk about that on the trailer, at least on Movie Talk. Um, and I think it's, it's going to be really, really cool. Like, it yeah. just looks like, 
um, just a fun like horror like yeah. horror, horror horror thing. So. And I think with Elizabeth Moss, she's proven herself to be a really good actress, most notably like in last year's 2019's Her Smell. Right. right Not too right. many people have seen that. Very underrated, I heard, I heard but she's good. she's spectacular in that, and I'm just assuming she's going to continue to be spectacular in this one. So. Right. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm looking forward to it. What's right. your next one? My next one. Okay, so this one is a little iffy because we really don't even know if it's coming out in 2020. Uh, but I don't care. I'm putting it here, and that's Chaos Walking. Um, okay. This is one starring Tom Holland um, and Daisy Ridley um, and Maz Mendelsohn. Um, so all of the Disney, you know, big players. Yeah. Um, it's based on a um, a YA, YA um, novel mm-hmm. trilogy. Um, but what excites me most about this is the fact that Doug Lyman is directing it and the fact that it has in- immense production problems. Um, the reason why that <laughs> excites the reason why that excites and only Doug Lyman will get me excited for that because whenever Doug Lyman whenever any of his movies are quote unquote production problems, they're fucking amazing. Like Edge of Tomorrow. Really? Edge of Tomorrow literally had the worst production shoot of all time. They reshot a bunch of it. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, The Born Identity. These are all movies that were made like with a very hectic production thing. Behind the scenes, people thought it was gonna flop. And those movies all came out amazing. That's his recipe um, to that's, success. That's his recipe. I mean, I'm literally like super excited. And the fact yeah. that they had so many punch of writers behind this movie. Um, it says, I mean, you go to the Wikipedia page, it says written by Charlie Kaufman. Ja- I was uh, going to say Lee. Charlie Kaufman, yeah. Eternal Sunshine. I was, I was going to, listen, Charlie Kaufman is probably my favorite writer of all time. He's so, great. Oh um, the fact that he did punch up work for this movie, like, I don't, yeah. I, he's, he wasn't one of the original writers, but he okay. came in. He came in and had to, when yeah. Charlie Kaufman comes in and fixes your script, like, what, what does that even tell? What does that even mean? Yeah. That just gets me like whole types of levels of excitement for this movie. Damn. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It it could be an absolute disaster. Um, they were still filming it as recently as April 2019. I think that's why um, Tom Holland can go to the, to the uh, Avengers Endgame premiere, actually. It was because he went back to do reshoots for this oh, movie. Shoot. Um, yeah, so I... I'm so looking forward to this. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's the that's the point about these kind of lists. You know, yeah, we're yeah, yeah. we're not saying everything we list is oh, is going to be amazing. Oh, it's something not. that we're looking forward to. We're going to see how it turns out. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully good. But you know, that's that's the fun of this. Yeah, yeah. Um. So also, my next one is in the Heights. Okay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah From yeah. um the director of Crazy Rich Asians, John mm-hmm. M. Chu. It's Unless adapted. A. Eh? Yeah. It's adapted from Lin-Manuel Miranda's musical, Mm -hmm. and um, I was really into theater and musicals when I was younger, so I'm really excited to see this. Um, Anthony Ramos, um, he stars in this one, and he was also in A Star is Born, like Lady Gaga's friend he played, and I Mm -hmm. thought he was a standout in that. Yeah. With what little um, screen time he was given, I think he, like, commanded it every single time, so I'm excited to see him, you know, play that main character. Yeah, no, I'm excited for this. It's actually uh, that that, the... That character and um and 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 the star is born. There's a hilarious moment where she's knocking at his door in the hotel room and he's playing like yes. Tyler the Creator in the background. He's like, "Go back to him, honey." I think it's amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm super looking forward to that movie too. Lin Manuel Miranda and obviously John M. Chu. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, outside of Crazy Rich Asians, he has uh, a lot of. I think he did directed uh, Step Up 3D, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so one of to love me, Step Up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but literally, I think Step Up 3D is one of the greatest dance movies probably ever also um, w- is step up to the streets yes yeah oh yeah, my yeah, god yeah. step up to you know what meaning of step up meaning that's, of step uh, up. that's coming up next you I'm know what actually, ace isn't here let's make it chaotic yeah we gotta we gotta do that <laughs> we, actually and i think honestly like we could have william bibiani on for that because he loves the step up movies really too. yeah yeah yeah. oh my god we've gushed about step up step up 3d plenty of times i before. love step up um yeah so super exciting stuff there um sp- i'm gonna keep it in the musical vein and i'm actually gonna go with um, West Side Story. Yes. This is w- one of my most anticipated. Now, people killed me, killed me on SEN because I said I was looking forward because this comes out the same weekend as Coming to America too, And I said I'm <laughs> looking forward to West Side Story more than Coming to America too. Yeah. Um, and they killed me for it. Um, but like... You know, Brett, you can do a double feature. Oh, you can do a double feature, of course. <laughs> um, but this is Spielberg we're talking about. Like, yeah. Even though Spielberg's bad day, it's still, at his very least, going to be really good. Um, yeah. And West Side Story just so ha- the original West Side Story just so happens to be my favorite musical of all time. Um, yeah, it's so good. Yeah, so I am stoked to um, to watch this movie um, and to see what what Spielberg brings to it. Like, obviously, like would I be more excited if like Spike Lee was directing it per se, or somebody who was like 
genuinely like a New Yorker, you yeah. know, like would I be more excited for that? Maybe. Or if somebody like younger, like Damien Giselle did it or mm-hmm. um, Carlos Lopez. That's um, a good Esperita. name to throw out. Yeah, yeah. Damien Giselle. Damien. Damien Giselle. And also yeah. the guy who did um, Blind Spotting, Carlos Lopez Esperada, I think is his name. Mm-hmm. If he did something like this, that would also get me probably more excited potentially. Uh, but again, it's Spielberg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we, can't, we can't be remiss as one of the greatest American directors. Yeah remaking one of the greatest American musicals. Definitely. So, uh, and um, starring Ansel Elgort. Ansel Elgort, Ansel yeah. Elgort, his voice is absolutely beautiful. I don't know if you saw him sing on like the James Corden show or something oh, like that. Oh, really? Also, I did like a few years ago listen to his like solo music for a solid, oh, for a hot minute. Hey, He's hey, very hey. talented. And also yeah. um, Rachel Zegler, Ziegler, mm-hmm. um, she's a newcomer. Yeah. Really good. She went viral um, singing Shallow from A Star Is Born, speaking oh, of A Star okay. Is Born again, hey. um, on Twitter. And okay. so that's cool. She's immensely talented. Um, oh, her nice. voice is beautiful. So I'm really excited to, you know, see those theater kids. Ansel Elgort, you know, he yeah. went to a theater high school. That hey. See those theater kids do their theater thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for that. I love it, man. I love it. Um, what's next for you? Next for me is Black Widow. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay, Yeah, okay, okay. Black Widow, okay. Um, obviously starring Scarlett Johansson, Rachel Weisz, Florence Pugh, David Harbour. Um, mm-hmm. It says Robert Downey Jr. on the Wikipedia. I, I, uh, I, heard, he, I heard he makes a cameo on this one. Dang, movie. okay, yeah, I'm yeah. going to cry. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> directed by Kate Shortland. Um, I'm Ooh. not familiar with her other work, but judging from the trailer, I mean, this mm. looks absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, so some of her other movies are something called Berlin Syndrome, Lore, Somersault, Things that I haven't heard of, so right. I'm excited to for this to be kind of like my first introduction to her. Mm-hmm. First of all, female director, female-driven story. Again, yeah. same thing with Birds of Prey. Yeah. Obviously, the MCU has had a better uh, track record in mm-hmm. terms of films, so I'm assuming this one's going to be great. Oh, of course, um, of course. And on to this new phase, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I really wanted a Black Widow movie from the beginning, so yeah. I'm excited that finally, you know, Scarlett Johansson, regardless of her personal life, is getting mm-hmm. another chance to play that character. Mm-hmm. Um, she she always kills it. She does great. She gave two of the best performances of the year yeah. in Jojo Rabbit and um, in Marriage Story in yeah. 2019. Yeah. So yeah, no, you can't you can't, you can't you can't deny her talent. And also, for, yeah. Florence Pugh is also having an All Star year this year. Oh too, my so. gosh! And yeah. she's like a year older than us. Yeah, 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 I was yeah, like, yeah, shoot. yeah. It's not even fair. It's not even fair. <laughs> she's 24. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and but she's just absolutely killing it. Just slaying it. Yeah. And um, this, I feel like this movie is going to remind me a lot of like Winter Soldier type vibes. You know, at yeah. least that's what the trailer presents to me. Definitely. So I'm hoping it, it kind of yeah. carries that. Really and Winter well. Soldier is one of my favorite MCU films. Same here. Yeah, Same it's here. one of my favorite. Um, I don't know if you saw Red Sparrow. Oh, did you see that one? I did see that one, yeah. Yeah, because um, people were obviously like comparing that story to like a similar story as of like Black Widows. So yeah. I'm excited to see how it kind of like diverts from something like that. Did you see, um, did you see Red Riddle? What, red, 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 what was it called? <laughs> red Sparrow. Red Sparrow, yeah. It's called Red Sparrow, right? Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, I did see it. I oh, did yeah. see it. Um, I like liked it? it. Yeah, I was just like watching it with friends and we were drinking wine. So it's oh, not something yeah. I like really paid attention to. I thought it was fine. Yeah. But it does, it definitely did feel like it should have been like a Black Widow origin film yeah, yeah, kind of. Sure, like for sure, for sure. Something different. But I'm excited for this one. Yeah, and I'm excited for this. I'm super excited for Black Widow. It's yeah. probably the MCU movie I'm looking forward to most this year. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um... All right, so I guess I'll go on to um, another uh, Disney um, product, and that's Soul um, from Pixar. Um, Soul is actually uh, the first Pixar movie that's ever been done without John Lasseter. Um, stars Jamie Foxx and um, my best friend, if you didn't know that. Um, and <laughs> get him on the show. Yeah, yeah, we got to get Jamie Foxx on the show. And, uh, and, t- and Tina Fey's in this as well. Um it's directed by uh, 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 Pete Doctor, who's obviously Inside Out and yeah. uh, Monsters Inc. and a lot of and up if I'm not mistaken, so a lot of the best, the top tier, top tier Pixar movies. And it's also co-directed by Keith Power, who's also the first black director in Pixar too, um, oh, wow. in a Pixar movie. Um, and this trailer just like brings a tear to my eye every time. It follows like this dude. He's like a jazz musician. He's like, I'm finally getting my break, and he falls to like a hole. I don't really know what the plot's about, but at least the trailer sh- the, least yeah. the trailer brings a tear out of me. You know what I mean? He falls into. He's like, yeah, I'm about to get my big break, and he falls into like this hole in like the middle of the street. Yeah. And he's like a soul body thing. I really have no idea what it's about. So I can't. Yeah, no, I haven't seen the trailer yet. Yeah. Oh, uh, you gotta see the trailer because. For for I think you know obviously like it's a black it's the first black lab Pixar film too so mm-hmm. um, this is obviously like a personal thing oh, but wow. um, but on top on top of it being like a black lab thing with first black director um, it also just looks like a movie about creatives right like yeah. the idea of like 
everybody's working their job and they're kind of stuck in this job. But then, like, if you have that creative spirit, like, are you able to endure and keep going? And yeah. I'm super excited, especially from the guy who did Inside Out, which is, like, one of my – that was so close to making my top films of the decade yeah. list. Um, and I remember we had that conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, that might have been, like, a, a strong 11 spot right there. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm super excited. Also, not to mention Trent Reznor and yeah, Atticus Ross are doing the right score. There. Ah, and I okay. would, I would, I would normally. I'm feel, sold. I, I <laughs> trust me. I, I was sold the day they announced it, and I would have been worried about them doing this score too because it's you know Michael Giacchino, you know. But they did the score for Watchmen, and Watchmen has an amazing jazz like element that goes throughout the yeah. score that 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 thing. So uh, I'm super excited. But my next on my list is Tenet. Okay, directed That's by my Christopher Nolan. Yeah, okay. yeah, so Easy. we could yeah. we could talk about this one. Um, it comes out July seventeenth, directed by Christopher Nolan, starring John David Washington and Robert Pattinson, mm-hmm. which I am so excited to see John David Washington in another like. Yeah. it seems to be a leading role. Um, mm-hmm. judging from the trailer, um, because he absolutely killed it in Black Klansman, and oh, I don't yeah. think he got the recognition he deserved for that one. Definitely not. So I'm excited yeah. for him to get that from this because you can't you can't not. Yeah. Like, just looking at the trailer, I already see he looks absolutely amazing as, like, a leading man again. Yeah, no. Um, obviously, I mean, listen, his, his dad's Denzel, so it's just it's genetic. Yeah. You know, I can't even blame him for that. But he, uh, I'm actually, yeah, de- I, I love uh, John John David Washington also because I'm a big Ballers fan. So he kind of, I think Ballers might have been, like, his first part ever, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, but I'm excited for Tenet because, obviously, Christopher Nolan, right? Yeah. Um, obviously, I mean. Robert Pattinson. And... Honestly, you know, I had no idea that this was supposed to be a sci-fi type thing until I saw the trailer. Um, but when I when the, when I saw when I heard his movie and I even saw the first trailer, like the beginning of the first trailer, I thought, oh, this is just going to be like a crime thriller. There's not going to be like any extra element to it. You yeah. Know? But then you the trailer unfolds and you see like the car driving like in reverse and like yeah. the people fighting each other like before like this whole time experimentation thing. Yeah. That makes me excited. What are they gonna do with that? You yeah, know? it's so crazy. And I heard it has to do with like World War Three. Oh really? Oh uh, we're we're right here. Yeah, I we're, mean and, and like he, what? How did Nolan call it? He knows. <laughs> he knows. This is I think this is what I've heard. It doesn't say it on the thing. Yeah. Um but you know, I heard that. And also the palindrome, like with the name, like Tenet, yeah. s- fits so well with what we're seeing in the trailers. And like yeah. the thing about it, it gives away nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it literally I have gives no idea what away. this movie's about. And Same. I, I love every second of it. Yeah, so um, excited yeah. for that one. Super excited for that, yeah. too. Um, I'll go on and, and uh, highlight another big director who's doing a big movie this year is Dune, uh, yeah. Denis Villeneuve. Um, I. Like, it literally became a meme at, at a point of how many people were in Dune, right? Like, yeah. Like, literally, probably the most stat cast. <laughs> and actually, I want to pull up the IMDb real quick. Timothy Chalamet, um, Rebecca Ferguson, um, Oscar Isaac, Zendaya, Jason Momoa, oh, wow. Dave Bautista, Josh Brolin, um, Stellan Skarsgård, Javier Bardem. Bruh, this is literally the most stat cast of all time. Yeah. You're talking about... That is insane. Yeah, and literally... Uh, Denny Villeneuve directing this. Yeah. Um, I have my problems with Blade Runner 2049. But we all know. Yeah, yeah, we all know. But <laughs> I'm I'm not even even take that movie aside. He still is probably the director of the 2010s for me. Yeah. Like, just from start to finish, he absolutely murders every movie that he touches. So I think this one is just gonna be another example of that. Yeah. So from what I understand, um, this is based off a novel. Yes. Yeah, it's based off like a novel. Um, yeah, I so kind of I'm, like sci-fi. One of those ground, you know, defining. Yeah. Sci-fi so I, I definitely um, am gonna plan to check that out because this doesn't come out till December 18th. So yes. we're basically like over 11 months away from it. Yeah. So it's gonna be a while, but I do want to check out the novel before I go into this. Um, yeah. But yeah, that that ensemble is amazing. This was also on my list. Mm-hmm. Um, Rebecca Ferguson. She killed it in Doctor Sleep. Um, mm-hmm. She did so well. I remember when we. Me and you went to the premiere for Dr. Sleep. Yeah. Um, one of the things, Dorian invited us to the premiere, and he yeah. was like, see if she could say anything about Dune. Yeah, So that yeah. was my only question. I was like, if I get 10 seconds to talk to Rebecca, I'm just going to ask her about Dune. Mm. But unfortunately, didn't get to talk to Rebecca. Um, they were running late. But, right, right. you know, cool stuff. I really don't know anything about this. Yeah. Um, I know that there was an f- original film from before did you see the original from like 1984 the, the 80s yeah the, the 80s the 80s movie is complicated i mean that's by david lynch and i love david lynch but i think even david lynch will admit that's not one of his best movies um and it's tough because dune is quite literally probably the quintessential sci-fi novel that went to define 
more movies in today's era than probably any other novel in, really? in history. Wow. Um, there's a great, great documentary called Jodorowsky's Dune that breaks down, you know, um, you know, uh, um, and um, Alejandro um, Jodorowsky. He's like this old experimental filmmaker from the 60s, and he wanted to make Dune back then. And his vision for Dune is literally the most ambitious probably idea oh, wow. ever created. And this was back in like the early 70s that they were pr- going to produce it. This is before Star Wars. So the the movie never ended up getting made. It's the quite possibly the biggest example of like pr- uh, 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 production hell or, or abandoned projects of all time. Yeah. And um, But the artwork from his movies ended up, the artwork from his stuff with Dune ended up becoming the key, key parts of Star Wars, key parts of Alien, key parts oh, of... Wow. Um, almost all the science fiction that came out in the 70s and 80s. So the fact yeah. that this is inspiring that and Denis Villeneuve is adding his spin to it and putting, and the story of Dune in and of itself is absolutely insane and nuts. Um, so yeah. No, I'm not familiar, so I'm excited to, you know, check all that out. That'll yeah. be my next one once yeah. I finish the book I'm reading oh, right yeah, now. yeah, for sure, for sure. Definitely check it out. Um, and, yeah, for you, and any other any other ones? You yes. Yeah, um, can, yeah, okay. Go. New Mutants. New Mutants, hey. <laughs> yeah. Well, they just they just came out with a new trailer, yeah. um, the most recent trailer, I think, yesterday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I have been hyped about this movie. I love Anya Taylor-Joy, um, Charlie Heaton from Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. Love him. Also, obviously, Maisie Williams, Game of Thrones. Yeah. She's incredible. Um, I don't know. Um, I love, you know, obviously, Marvel. Yeah. Um, I love. I look forward to always seeing this on screen because I loved it so much when I was a kid. So it's kind of like little dreams coming true seeing right. all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but same thing with you. That development, not development hell, but like production yeah. hell that yeah. they have. Um, mm-hmm. With the fact that they wrapped this movie so long ago, like mm-hmm. so long ago, yeah. they keep pushing. I don't even know how many times they pushed it back. Yeah. I think the first trailer came out like. Two years ago. Yeah. Like no, it's literally, been yeah. Like two years. Mm-hmm. So it's been absolutely forever. I'm like, it's so crazy because all these actors are huge names. Um, yeah. The premise, the tr- original trailer seemed good too. Like, yeah. I don't know how much they ended up changing. I believe what's going to come out this year is like the original version. Oh, like really? no reshots. That's what I believe. But it's probably because, you know, obviously Disney acquired Fox. Right. And they probably don't want to funnel more money. Right. right in right. order to reshoot. That's... M- purely speculation Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but um that's what i'm assuming from that so we will be seeing the original version from forever ago we're gonna see it the way it was yeah wait Um, so i'm actually like kind of confused like yeah they reshot things and they're not using the reshoot things i I don't know if they ended up actually reshooting it or if they plan to reshoot it and then the disney fox and then Ah, yeah so i don't know which is the case um Mm -hmm. but yeah of course um I guess they're not confident in this, yeah, you know? know yeah. um, so why funnel more money into something? But I'm excited for it. I'm excited for this premise. It's uh, five young mutants just discovering their abilities while held in a secret facility against their will. Mm-hmm. Fight to escape their past sins and save themselves. Right, right, The right. original trailer looked like like a it had horror, horror elements. Yeah, yeah, it had horror elements in it. And so that's something that I want to see. Uh-huh. I want to see those different takes on our favorite superheroes. You know what I mean? Favorite, right. like... With mutants, like we've seen uh, Logan do extremely well, taking something like that normal story we see Wolverine a ton, but then going like a more like Western right. kind of like road mm-hmm, movie. Mm-hmm, Love mm-hmm. seeing that. So I want to. I'm excited for this one. I'm excited. I'm excited for this one. Too. Might be awful. No, no, <laughs> might the, be completely awful. This was quite literally on my most anticipated 2018. So I'm glad to see that it here. For, insane <laughs> to think about. Coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and um, shout out the rest. The rest of my most anticipated movies. I'm not gonna mm-hmm. lie. Are all Netflix pictures. Yeah. Um, because Netflix put out an amazing like Twitter thread of like their upcoming I went through movies. Those, yeah. And I'm like, fuck, there's like four of these that I like really want to talk about. But I'll just talk about uh I'll talk about this one in particular. It's called The Five Bloods. It's the latest Spike Lee movie. Um mm-hmm. it follows four African American vets returning to Vietnam, searching f- and I'm reading the tweet directly from Netflix. Yeah. Um follows uh four African American vets who return from Vietnam searching for the remains of their fallen squad leader and the promise of a buried treasure. It stars uh Chadwick Bozeman. Um, Paul Walter Hauser, Norm Lewis, um, DeRoy um, Lando, and Jonathan Majors. So it it has a really, really cool cast. And I'm stoked to see what this movie's all about. Even Paul Walter Hauser, I haven't seen Richard Jewell yet, um, but in I, Tanya. He oh. was so, so good. Yeah. Um, so then him, you said Chadwick Boseman. Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, 
that that's a cool premise. Yeah. Excited for something like Super that. Super excited know? for that. Yeah. Netflix killed it this year. Yeah. Like yeah. I mean, they really did. Um, mm-hmm. you know, Marriage Story, Irishman, all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so here's to them continuing. My yeah. my next one is also a Netflix movie. Yeah. Um, this could also be completely awful. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know. We, we literally know. have no trailer to even go off of for yeah. these. Um, it was in the string of tweets, but I'm reading from the Wikipedia. Uh, this one's called The Prom. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, so it says it's an American musical comedy film directed by Ryan Murphy Ooh, from like Glee. Glee, yeah. Um, based on the Broadway musical of the same name and slated for release in 2020. Um, it has Meryl Streep, James Corden, Nicole Kidman, Aquafina, Keegan Michael Key, mm. and the premise. I guess. I guess it's about um, a young girl who is a lesbian Mm. um, and the school won't let her take her girlfriend to the prom or Mm. won't let her attend the prom. Something like that. And it takes place in like Indiana. Oh, okay. Um, So, and it's a musical. So I'm excited to see this because, first of all, like LGBTQ representation. Absolutely. um, Especially for a younger audience. Because obviously we do have things like this past year from like Portrait of a Lady on Fire and Mm -hmm. things like that. But, um, Sometimes we get those gems for younger audiences, something like a Love, Simon, right. um, things like that. So this seems like it's going to be in that vein. I mean, it has a, like a huge cat, Meryl Streep, Nicole right. Kidman. Like besides whoever, I don't know who are obviously playing the teenagers um, mm-hmm. yet. It doesn't say. Yeah. But for probably all newcomers. of that. Yeah, probably newcomers, which is really cool. And it's yeah. cool to have um, a film like this. Also, um, Miseducation of Cameron Post. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you saw right. that one. But yeah, um, all, of, all of those films that kind of have that representation and it's geared towards a younger audience, featuring a younger audience, um, something I really admire. So that's yeah. why I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, that was, that was super exciting. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to that one, too. Um, uh, one that I'm looking forward to, and this is my second to last one. Um, I'm going with, I'm thinking about ending things. This is, uh, yep, you, I have that one too. Yeah, that yeah, one too. All right, yeah. Yeah, let's just talk about so. it. Yeah. Um, Charlie Kaufman is directing, <laughs> we're, you know, obviously, Charlie both Kaufman. love, yeah, uh, Charlie Kaufman, uh, spoken as before in his video. Um, and it's a road trip. Be, uh, the synopsis, according to the Netflix tweet, is, um, a road trip, uh, becomes a twisted mix of, uh, palatable tension, psychological frenzy, and sheer t- terror. Um, I have no idea what the, that description means, <laughs> but that just gets me way more excited. Yeah. Um, and I listen. Uh, you know, obviously, we both love Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind. Favorite movie um, of all time. Yeah, that's you know, and, and that's a really good favorite movie. Um, so, uh, he, uh, Charlie Kaufman also directed um, Sin uh, Dosh, New York. Um, which is, uh, I guess, came out oh six, but that to me is one of the most immensely profound and thought provoking like movies ever. Like you could literally, I didn't first time I watched that movie, I had no idea what that movie was about. But upon like rewatching, and that's that's a thinker, that's a true true yeah. thinker. So I'm really excited to see this one. I'm hoping could could play in that same vein. Yeah, and it says on Wikipedia that Tony Collette. Yeah, is in the cast. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Give me Tony Collette in anything, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. anything in the world, and I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Um, God, Knives Out, Hereditary, yeah. um, Unbelievable, the show. Oh, yeah. So, so good. Um, one more thing. Um, the My most anticipated, not a film, but uh-huh. uh, a Netflix series, uh, I'm just so excited for it, is right. Haunting of Hill House season two. Oh, okay. Um, so I believe it's an anthology season um, type oh, of situation. Okay, okay, so okay. it's something else, but it is is still um, helmed by Mike Flanagan. I believe he's directing like one episode rather than I think with Haunting of Hill House, he did all of them. Okay. But um, to me, he's one of my most, um, my one of my favorite like newer directors, like just in the past like 10 years, I think his films mm-hmm. have been coming out. Like him, Ari Aster, obviously Jordan Peele, people like that. Yeah. He stands out immediately. He has his specific style. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he, I believe he's directing the pilot, has other people that he trusts to do the rest. Um, mm-hmm. But that first season of the show is something that I love. I think it's incredibly spectacular. And um, I th- I believe I watched it like about a year and a half ago whenever it came out. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm not a huge TV person. I'm getting way more into television um, like yeah. recently and like series and things like that. Um, but at the time, that was one of the first ones I remember that held my attention the way it did. Like yeah. I binge watched it in in, in in one day. Yeah. I started watching it on like a flight and I didn't finish until that night, like getting home, finishing the entire season. It right. is. Have you seen it? Um, uh, Haunting, Haunting of Hill House? Hill House? Not, not 100%, no. Oh my gosh, it yeah, is so good. Have, you have to watch it. I still got to finish it. 
And I, I, I do. I, a lot of people say like you gotta get through like the first three episodes or whatever. Yeah. Because the fourth episode is apparently the big one. I don't know. Is that true or not? I honestly just remembered it as one whole. One whole. <laughs> I don't remember oh, okay, which okay, one. Okay, okay, okay. I when I tell you, the only time I stopped when I started watching it was to Uber from the airport back to my apartment and then just continue watching yeah, it. Yeah, that yeah. short Uber that ride. Short Uber ride. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the only time I stopped. I feel you. I gotta. I gotta. I definitely gotta. Check you it have out to. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just serve up my most anticipated. I don't know if this is my most anticipated, but my last movie. Um, again, another Netflix movie. Um, it's called Me or Mac Mac or what? I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, but it it was literally I think one of the first tweets that that uh, Netflix put out, and it's directed by David Fincher. Yeah. And the story revolves around the writing of Citizen Kane. What? <laughs> So literally, you're talking about David Fincher, the guy who did the social network, about the creation of Facebook, making a, what I put as my number one film is last decade is making a movie about the creation of how of what most would consider the greatest movie of all time. How is this not going to be amazing? Yeah. This is going to be Oscar front runner across the board. I think this one is going to just I, I'm going to love it. And I don't know who's like doing the writing behind it. Um, I know Sorkin was busy this year because he's doing the trial of the Chicago 7, which I think is uh, – I'm also looking forward to that movie yes, as well. Yes, definitely. Um, but, yeah, this this movie, I'm, I think I think Fincher – anything Fincher touches is gold. David Fincher's father is oh. doing the screenplay. Oh, really? Jack oh, Fincher. What? what? I don't even know what that means. Oh, okay, so this – Hey, what? listen. We gotta get the we gotta get the best picture best going because this one what? <laughs> this one might quite literally be the oh my god movie of twenty twenty. Oh my god. Okay, wait. I am so confused. Well, yeah. so I guess Jack Fincher passed away in two thousand two. Oh, okay. So okay. he, he was sitting on this. He might have had. Yeah, he might have. He written, had yeah. this for a long time. So that is another interesting, um, like mm, thing about he's this. Adapting wow. His father's, uh, Long lost screenplay. Okay, okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, no, it um here for it. Yeah, this is the this is uh this is uh yeah, we gotta get the Oscar best ready for this one because um this is also the first time Fincher is ever making a movie about movies. Yeah. Like that's never happened before for him. Um this is also the first time this this is also his first movie that's gonna be in full black and white. It is also the first movie that's gonna be there's a lot of firsts that's going to be incorporated into this movie. I am stoked. I am absolutely stoked about this movie. Yeah, no, same. Especially after hearing um, that his father's behind the screenplay. Yeah, yeah. That is yeah. so. That is so interesting. That is so cool. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm excited to see that one. Yeah. Um, does Netflix have dates for any of these that they put? Because I don't remember. Yeah, I don't. They I think they, they just said 2020. Dates. Yeah, they just said 2020. Okay. So, so no we'll be, you know, we'll be looking out for all that stuff. Um, yeah. I'm concluded with my list. Yeah, Are yeah. You... I'm good. I'm good on my list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in conclusion, there's a. T- Ton, ton of exciting films that are going to be coming out in 2020. Yeah. Um, stay tuned to hear what we think about them when they actually come out. Who knows? Our opinions might change. We might be excited for the wrong reasons. Right. Hopefully not. Right, right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a pretty good list between the both of us. I think it's pretty like, decent. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of movies. A lot of overlapping, here. too. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, but thank you guys so much for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed. I'm Sabrina. This is RB3. And we're peacing out. Music.